reflection of it. I was in the place I wasn't, I, wa- I didn't want to be in that place. Mm-hmm. The, the, the unit wasn't the right one. And I didn't have a balance between life, personal life. And there was so many things that they made the whole picture. So it's more about taking those, even 10 minutes, sitting down with somebody and say, what's going on? And then you start going through targeted questions and then ask yourself, be very honest and say, this is what's going on. And I have the power to change that. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I notice these days is that often you get to talk to your colleagues around the dining table when you're breaking for lunch or morning tea. But these days, everyone is just sitting on their mobile phone and scrolling through. So you don't even have the opportunity. Somebody's going through something or they're just miserable at work. But you don't even have the opportunity to interrupt their private time to say, hey, what's going on? Do you find that over there that everyone's engaged in their mobile and not really communicating to each other anymore or supporting each other? Yes, it, it, society nowadays is like uh, switching to that, unfortunately, and it's like losing the contact with the present moment, which was going on around us. And I don't know, sometimes it could be a way to escape the moment for people, like try to get away from wherever they are, because once again, there's no happiness in that moment. It's like a sort of an escape. I want yeah. my debris. You know, mm-hmm. 20 minutes, whatever, in immersed in watching whatever you want to watch on the phone, which is, I can accept that. It's not like my call, but then at the same time, we can maximize the time and then engage with others in a meaningful way and then maybe get something out of it. Mm-hmm. Another thing that I found over the years in the four countries of work, a lot of people don't even use those 30 minutes they have to disconnect. They keep talking about work. <laughs> Okay. Uh, and that's uh, and that's the yeah. I can see your point. People either on the phone or people still talking about what's going on and keep going feeding each other's like negativity. I would say, mm-hmm. and it's more yeah. It's uh, and it's a great opportunity actually because it, it tests uh, our resilience on how we deal with situations and how we kind of work towards getting a different perspective and a better reaction to situations. In the past, I would have said, I'm leaving this room and I'm going for a walk. Now I look from a lens of how can I help them? What can I do to get them in a better place? Uh, Yeah. And you take those opportunities with people you see in that workplace. But do people come to you? Have they heard your podcast or somebody from Ireland that knows you have reached out? How do you influence people who are not in your immediate work area? They, well, I mean, I work with a lot of people and most of them reach out through DM. They DM me on LinkedIn or they start a conversation on one of my posts. Yeah. And then I'm always happy to jump on a free call, which is about 15, 20 minutes to see what can I do. And if I can do it, because not all the time we can help. And, yeah. and, and, I, and everything kind of escalates from there. It's, it's more, well, that's what I do. That's tell me what's going on. And then I can give you some free advice and see that's what I, that's what I did in the past. It might work for you, might not work for you. And then if the person is really interested and wants, I can send a sort of an audit. And this audit asks some targeted questions, about five, seven questions. And then from there, we can work together maybe or something else. It, it doesn't really, every uh, situation is so personal and different that sometimes that's why I'm thinking about this membership because a membership will cover a larger spectrum of ideas. And I'm going to be posting and then putting videos out once a month and now people can watch them on replay. And it's going to be different than working one-on-one. <laughs> and I still enjoy working one-on-one, but I feel that it's such a big issue nowadays, this burnout. And yeah. it's like, that I'm not turning um, the day to cover. Yeah. 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 It would, if you had a thousand one-on-ones, where's your time gone? Yeah, you'd be exactly. like, like creating a webinar then for people to tap into on mass. Yeah, yeah. You would be far reaching. The whole life journey platform is that part of the mindset or that's something different? 
The whole of journey is basically the plan that I'm offering a one is basically divided and it covers very aspects of the life. And that's why I like to call it the whole journey, the whole life journey, because it's about nursing, but nursing is, it doesn't define who we are. We are nurses as a profession, but we are Paula, we are Christian, we are Mark, we are Luke, we are everybody around. And it's about seeing the life with this different lens and see, all right, I'm a nurse, this is going on, but what can I do? And then it's like looking at habits, looking at how we live and how we do where we want to go, goals to how to deal with the money mindset. There's so many things I covered through that. And that kind of reflects back in the nursing because nursing is going to be just a reflection of who we become. It's the the system. Everyone is pushing to change the system, but we don't change ourselves first. So how can the system can change? So if we all change even a step at a time, a small step every day, Mm -hmm. then the system will reflect the thousand of people that have changed. And it will change itself. It's like pouring from an empty cup. How could you do that? Hey, you know what complements great conversations is fine wine. And there is nothing finer than a bottle of Plantagenet wine. Whether you're relaxing after a long shift, at a gathering with friends, or lounging by the fire, Plantagenet wine provides the perfect complement to any occasion. Plantagenet wine is meticulously crafted in one of the most remote locations in the world, using finest ingredients available to create elegant and sophisticated wines that you deserve. Head to plantagenetwines.com for your online order and enter the code NURSES at the checkout to receive 10% off your order with free shipping Australia-wide on any order over $180. So stock up for winter or plan the perfect gift with the most enchanting collection of wines you'll ever try. Head to plantagenetwines.com and enter the code NURSES to start your Plantagenet experience. Conversations with Nurses is proudly sponsored by Fat Burners Only. Australia's number one online supplement store. Nursing is a demanding job and requires your body to be in tip-top condition. So why not head to Fat Burners Only, Australia's go-to store for supplements online. FBO provides you with a full range of supplements to support your hectic lifestyles and of course the energy and focus you need for those long shifts. FBO has Australia-wide free express shipping so your products arrive at your door faster and as a special treat for our listeners enter the code nurses at the checkout to receive 10 percent of every order with proceeds going towards supporting this very podcast look good feel great and operate at peak performance with fat burners only proudly supporting nurses in association with your number one nursing podcast conversations with nurses You were talking about non-traditional nursing roles. Could you probably list, say, 10 or 5 that are different from the clinical in the hospital wards? Or, yeah. I mean, there are like so many different nursing roles. I created this checklist that has free, which is a free checklist that I give away for free and people can tap in and have a look. And there are like uh, insurance nurses, like biotech, pharma and there's going to be like clinical specialized nurses in different areas. There are like concierge nursing. There's so many and like the nurse writing, a nurse writer, freelance nursing and that every healthcare business needs a nurse. That's basically the, the bottom line. So everything that has to do with healthcare net had to and they have to have a nurse basically on board to see what's going on, which could be from an electronic record businesses to, as I said, biotech. They need perspective of people that have work or that know what a clinical shift is and what we need on a daily, day-to-day activity for nurses. Yeah. And so that, that's the idea that I decided to do that because other people reach out and says, I'm burned out. I don't want to do this job anymore. What can I do? And I says, well, you don't have to leave nursing. You don't have to go and become a new PS driver. By all means, if you want to do it, go. 
you can still make, you can still switch to different jobs, still using your life to still be a nurse. Like you not might not work on uh, one-on-one with a patient like in ICU, you might not have that clinical exposure, but if that's who you don't want to do anymore, that's okay. You can become like, you can support people from a telemetry and from home Mm -hmm. and then answer the phone, being like a liaison between doctors, discharges and social care, such a workers, you can do this. Opportunities are endless. It's like having someone that tells you they are there. This is what you need to look. And by first, you need to understand what I'm doing. That's why I'm creating, I created this sort of checklist. And that's why from there, I created that. I'm actually finalizing a guide where I tell people where to find these jobs, how to apply. I created a list of 20 biotech companies with that employed nursing, nurses here in the, in the U.S. And uh, what jobs you can do through them. Ten companies will hire remote nurses and what you can do. It's like a guy, I think it's about 19 pages. I haven't finished it yet. It's about two. And Uh and that will give an idea to to nurses on uh, what can they do. But first, I like to give this 50 checklist for free and people can do whatever they want want to reach out, I'm happy to discuss journey. If they want to use the list and do their job, there's, they do their homework themselves. Mm. That's perfect. What up there to help others? Yeah. And if you talk to nurses and, and you ask them what made you become a nurse or when I'm teaching students, nursing students, they say, well, I, I wanted to do something where I'm helping people. But really being on the clinic or on the ward doesn't suit every personality type, does it? You could have somebody very introverted having to do very personal stuff to another human being and it doesn't sit well with them. So that's good that they can still help people but and be nursing but in a totally different environment which probably would suit their personality type or their emotional state better or their passion better, finding that passion. Right. Absolutely. Exactly. Actually, the key word is like I, the why, the passion, why mm. you want to help others. Helping others could be like putting an IV or giving them a med, but it could also be being like an emotional support sort of liaison between them being discharged and not knowing what's going on and having that sort of void between the discharge and what's going on the next three months. Right. And that's being a nurse and helping others. It's not like a technical skill that so you put your friends on the patient, but you're using your knowledge and then you are helping the person to feel less lost. Right. And that's nursing too. And nursing is such, it's, I mean, I love the profession. It's so great because mm. this is there's no, this it's so endless, endless. That is the limit truly because mm. you can even jump, jump in a, I don't know, in a, I know you start up and then create something for nurses. You can sell on NC, gently. You can do anything. Yeah, yeah. And you're right. I've been nursing for probably a lot longer than you have. So I've been nursing for 44 years and I'm still in the clinical area and I love it, but I want something different. And I want to give that knowledge to people, but I don't necessarily want to be teaching because you've got to follow people's curriculums and guidelines. It's more that personal one-on-one, which is what you're doing and which is what I was attracted to on your LinkedIn profile. Just find your passion, teach them to be good nurses, give that little bit extra to the patient. That's really important. And almost go back to what nursing used to be where you were at the bedside with the patient. I'm going to tell you a little yeah. story. I was in ED. I went into ED the other night myself because I'd hurt my hand somehow and I couldn't tingling and couldn't grip it. And I sat in ED for 11 and a half hours before I went in behind the closed doors to be seen by somebody. And I was sitting in a room opposite the nurse's station and there were three nurses One sat on the floor and two sat at the desk and they were chit-chatting and it was just before seven o'clock in the morning, chit-chatting. And I was thinking, really, you can see I'm sitting here by myself. Why not offer somebody a drink or come and see if I'm okay or let me know that the doctor will be around soon or, sorry, we've got a bit of noise outside, or just comfort the patient. But they don't do that. They've lost that art. 
And that's old yeah. school nursing where I came from. And I've come through the changes with my degree and my postgrad. It's just, it was disappointing. It didn't feel like 